be here in Hamburg. Thanks for to the organizers for giving me a chance to tell my story and my vision. My life changed 10 years ago when my younger son, Lars, his behavior seemed to develop in a different way compared to his siblings. His, his older brothers have taught my wife and me that two of them, they set their own development speed. You can't force them, you just have to be ready to support them when they are ready to take the next step on their ladder. But Lars turned differently. He, he could sit on a swing for hours and be happy in the kindergarten. Mm. He could play with toys, but he would rather be in the corner. He wouldn't like to, to play with the other kids. It was very hard for us to, commu to communicate with him. It was two-way monologues more than dialogues. We were patient, but uh, the, the pedagogic workers in the kindergarten told us that we have to figure out there's something wrong here. He does not fit in with the other kids and, and we don't have the capacity to handle kids who are not kind of in the same mold as the other kids who love to play together with each other. So we were invited to a meeting where a psychiatrist, we hoped that we would be told give some advice of how to bring Lars to the next ladder in this development. But the <coughs> cyclist told us that there may not be so many ladders, steps on this ladder, because there's autism. At that time, I've only seen the Rain Man film. How many of you have seen the Rain Man film? Yeah. Forget everything about Rain Man. <laughs> There are not very many. I met Kim Peek, the original character behind the Rain Man film in Ohio some years ago. I'm sorry to say that he's dead now. His father told me that only one third of the original Kim Peek was replicated into the Dustin Hoffman character in the Rain Man film. And from the Kim Peek type of people, there may be only 15 to 20 on a worldwide basis. While in the community, is close to 1% of the population that has enough autistic traits to get a diagnosed if they meet a psychiatrist. There's so many, close to 1 million in Germany. Um, Lars was diagnosed and that changed our world. I was, became active in the autism organization and was chairman for a local branch of Autism Denmark for three years. And I met very many adolescents and adults with autism. They were just like Lars, just older. They were so nice people and they were so skilled in many ways. But none of them had a job where they could use their special skills. And we thought, my wife and I, that what would happen when we grew too old to be able to support Lars in, in society? And we thought that, well, if he could have a job where he would be respected and appreciated for his special personality and for his skills, he would be a happy man when we grew old. But I didn't see any chances. And it was so devastating because Lars is the most wonderful kid you can imagine. And he has so many skills. Like when he was seven, he was sitting in the kitchen drawing like this. I don't know if any of you can see what that's supposed to mean. I didn't see it at once. Any ideas? Europe. Very good. But what are the figures? What are the boxes? I didn't know, but then I remember that when we have been on vacation in Germany, he had been reading the book of European maps. And I found that on the shelf. And here you can see there are boxes, there are figures referring to a right page in the book where you can see the area of the certain part of Europe. So this is drawn out of memory. 
and I'm trying to find errors, but I haven't succeeded yet. There are some details, like down here it says DB, it does not over here. But he read the book, he knows that Gibraltar is down there and it's British, so he had this piece of information. I think it's fantastic, and I think it's so sad that there's no room for people like Lars in society today. Everyone has to be a good team player, everyone has to be good at handling stress, everyone is expected to love to take on new challenges. Why? I'll give you a new exercise. What is that? If you ask an expert, he won't say Bandelang, he'll say this is Tark Second Officinale. That's the Latin term of the species. And then it has a lot of words. In Danish it has a word if you regard it as a weed, and another word if you regard it as a herb. Most people, the majority of people in Denmark regard this plant as a weed because the lawns has to be as equally green as the neighbors. And in the flower beds, only the plants that you decided should be there are welcome. And if you have that perspective, it's quite an annoying weed. But if you have a special knowledge and know the virtues of this plant and put it, take it from the lawn and put it in the kitchen garden and treat it well, it's the most productive, most valuable herb in the Danish nature. But not very many know. That's the same with people like Lars. Um, the people with autism in general. They do not fit into the norm of society. They are not like the neighbor's children. So they are problematic. There are special schools, there are special needs, and it's very expensive. So, autism is very much known in, in Denmark from the newspapers, articles of how expensive it is with all the special needs programs. But not very many take the other perspective and say, we need people like Lars. Darwin, Einstein, Newton probably would have been categorized today as people with autism, the part of the autistic spectrum called Asperger syndrome. And maybe today, what, what would happen if they started school, would they be regarded as some problematic kids, you have to put them on a special track, a special schools, or would they be welcome in the mainstream school class? I don't know, but I think in a lot of cases they would be suffering from the weed <coughs> angle. Asperger's syndrome was not categorized as a disability until 1994. Why? Well, what's happening to our society? Why are we narrowing the spectrum of normality all the time? Why do everyone have to fit the, the needs of being good team players, flexible, good at handling stress and headache and so on. There should be room for other people. So, in order to make better opportunities for us in the future, I decided to start another company called Specialista, meaning the specialists. These are some of our consultants. They have autism. They are some of the most wonderful colleagues and employees you can imagine. We have set up 
an environment where it's normal to have autism. So for the first time in their lives, they feel normal. But in the rest of society, they are the difficult ones, those who do not fit in, those who are mostly known for what cannot be done and what they are cannot comply with. But we hire them because we have expectations. Our ambition is to make them want it, set up a working environment where they are wanted and where they can excel. And that's the good news I'd like to share with you today. If you make people with autism and very many other invisible disabilities like ADHD, attention deficits, hyperactive disorder, terrible name, there are even more people in that category than among people with autism. So, generally, it will be millions. In the US, it will be so many millions. It's so hard to make up how many people do not fit in. But we can make them feel better. We can set up working environments where they thrive. And, and what I found out is that in the rest of society, they are known for not being social, not understanding the way you communicate, and have special interests that makes them inflexible. I found out these people like to be very social. They are very good colleagues, they are loyal, they won't take, talk badly about others. If they can be social on their own terms, they are social. They are very good at communicating. Well, they may not understand and thrive with irony and sarcasm. But guess what? We don't use irony and sarcasm. And guess what? Many of the companies where our consultants work, they also like the, the idea that when our consultants are working in that environment, they should not use irony and sarcasm. There are very many people who would be happy if if your companies decide not to use our and sarcasm. Just imagine if people told, would state their point of views and you never had to guess what do they mean if they say this, this is the reverse or they actually say what they mean. In our environment, our consultants, they say what they mean, when they mean it. There are no hidden agendas, it's actually a fantastic environment. We had set an ambition with the first company in the world that actually sees these resources as competitive market terms. I never had any money to start up specialist in it has been six years of surviving as a pioneer. We are in contact with the people in more than 50 countries who want us to help them start up in that environment. We want to set up specialist on the operations in a collaborative and knowledge share network all over the world as showcases of what can happen if you put specialist people in places where they are wanted and where they can excel. And we want this to be the showcase for getting authorities, companies, all stakeholders in community want to learn how to understand and support these people so they can feel worthy and valuable as citizens in society. We are starting up in Glasgow this summer. We are in contact with the next maybe in Berlin. We are very strong contact in the US, in Ireland, in many other locations. So while we are spreading the concept we are building more and more knowledge. We want to develop a management model that will fit with the people in your companies who probably won't realize their full potential under the standard HR model, but they have to be a good team player, you know, with all that stuff. So we set a vision. We want to change societies all over the world. We want to make them respect and accommodate 
specialist team as with their valuable citizens. We've set a goal. We want to enable one million jobs worldwide for specialist people. Goals should be challenging and easy to remember. And I think we found a perfect goal. We can't do it on our own. We are blowing the dandelions, seeds and hope that they will land somewhere in an environment that's friendly and actually pays an interest to understand and support these people. But for these people it's not enough to hope. What I want to is to involve all stakeholders in society, also hopefully a lot among you as audience today because we cannot do this alone and there's so many people out there who need to feel wanted and respected in society. So I hope that you will join me and you will receive the seeds from me blowing the dandelions. I hope you see the picture that seeds of dandelions is almost the same as bringing our people out in society. If you treat them well, if you make them feel wanted, they will pay you back because they will accept. Thank you for listening to my story and for your attention. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you. Focus on it.